My name is Sasha Meinrath. I work for the New America Foundation, a policy institute here in Washington, D.C. I also am the founder and executive director of the QN Foundation, a research and development group in Urbana, Illinois. Our mission is to develop and deploy and implement uh, wireless solutions for communities that otherwise couldn't afford to get online. So I think there's two big issues here. One is just the pocketbook issues in terms of spreading affordable connectivity and broadband access. The second is in terms of options that are available, whether it's you know who your, your choices of providers are, your service providers for your internet connectivity, or in terms of what you can do with your services. One of the big problems in, in terms of connectivity today is we're sort of hampered as to what we can do in terms of having very small speeds of having very few options in terms of the applications and services that run on these networks. And one of the things that a, lo a global movement of people have been working on is how do we build infrastructure that allows us to do things that might be science fiction today but would be completely uh, feasible if we had the right resources to use. One of the big questions I think a lot of folks have is why are people in opposition to white space devices? And I think it comes down to a lot of fear over changing business models. What we're seeing today is a revolution in terms of the technologies that are available for people to use for broadband services and applications. Instead of having this notion of a command and control infrastructure, right, like a cell tower commands and controls all the cellular telephones that connect up to it. And if I want to make a phone call to anyone, I have to go up to the cell tower and then back down to that other phone. I can't connect, communicate directly like a walkie-talkie. Well, new technologies are coming along that allow people to connect directly to one another. You could think of it as a peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure. But if you've already put billions of dollars into this command and control infrastructure and somebody comes along with a faster, cheaper alternative, you might be fearful of how do I adapt to that new business environment. And so we're seeing huge amounts of funding spent on lobbying at the state, local, and now national levels in order to prevent innovations and new business models from being allowed to develop in the United States and worldwide. In, in terms of what can be done next, I think I look to what's already been done in the space of Wi-Fi devices. And if you look at sort of the global movement of open source developers, of which I've been very involved in for the past almost decade now, you see that technologies that are now at play and used in things like Meraki technology or phone technology, these open technologies that are at play, what they're missing is this notion of being able to interconnect across larger areas, between households, between neighborhoods, of setting up in some ways middle mile solutions in the same way that you might create a network in your home, there's no reason not to scale that up to include a community-wide network or a regional-wide network. But what we're missing is a, a, a space, a, a technology that allows us to go through trees and to go through buildings and to have that sort of large-scale deployment. And what white space devices are is a new technology that allows us to use the same you know, frequencies that television bands use. And obviously, you can get a television station tens of miles away from the transceiver, or the transmitter of that television station. The same could be true for consumer grade technologies and white spaces, allowing us in essence to build infrastructure that interconnects entire cities to one another.